I pray you. When in your letters these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely but too well. Of one not easily jealous but being wrought perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away richer than all his tribe. Of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, dropped tears as fast as the Arabian trees, their medicinal gum. Set you down this and say, besides, that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turban Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. Tell me, I take it much unkindly that thou, Iago, who hast had my purse as if the strings were thine, shouldst know of this. Blood, but you will not hear me. If ever I did dream of such a matter, abhor me. Thou toldst me thou didst hold him in thy hate. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant off cap to him. And by the faith of man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place. But he, as loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with a bombast circumstance, horribly stuffed with epithets of war, and in conclusion, non-suits my mediators. For certes, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician. One Michael Cassio, a Florentine, that never set a squadron in the field. He, sir, had the election. He, in good time, must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark, his more ships ancient. By heaven, I'd rather would have been his hangman. Why, there's no remedy. Tis the curse of service. Preferment goes by letter and affection, and not by old gradation, where each second stood heir to the first. Now, sir, be judge yourself whether I in any just term am a fine to love the more. I would not follow him then. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. You shall mark, in following him I follow but myself. Heaven is my judge, not I for love and duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the native act and figure of my heart in compliment extern, <laughs> tis not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for daws to peck at. I am not what I am. What a full fortune. <laughs> can the thick lip so, if he can carry it thus? Call up her father. Make after him, rouse him, poison his delight, proclaim him in the streets, incense her kinsmen, and though he in a fertile climate dwell, plague him with flies. Though that his joy be joy, yet throw such changes of vexation on it as it may lose some color. What? Oh, but you! 
Signor Brabantio, ho! Away, Quarto Brabantio! Thieves, thieves, thieves! Look to your house, your daughter, and your bags! Thieves, thieves! What is the reason for this terrible summons? What's the matter there? Signor, is your family within? Are your doors locked? Why? Wherefore I ask you this? Oh, swoon, sir, you are robbed. For shame, put on your gown. Your heart is burst. You have lost half your soul. Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is topping your white you. Arise, arise, awake the snorting citizens with a bell, or else the devil will make a grand sire of you. Arise, I say. What? Have you lost your wits? Most reverend, senor, do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Rodrigo. Oh, the worse are welcome. I have charged thee not to haunt about my doors. In honest plainness thou hast heard me say, my daughter is not for thee. <laughs> sir, sir, sir! But thou must needs be sure. My spirit and my place have in them powers to make this bitter to thee. Patience, good sir. What tellst thou me of robbing? This is Venice. My house is not a grange. Most grave Brabantio, in simple and pure soul, I come to you. Soon, sir, you are one of those who will not serve God if the devil bid you. Because we come to do you service and you think we are ruffians, you'll have your daughter covered with a Barbary horse. You'll have your nephews nay to you. You'll have courses for cousins and genets for Germans. What profane wretch art thou? I am one, sir, that comes to tell you your daughter and the moor are now making the beast with <laughs> two backs. Thou art a villain. You are a senator. <laughs> this thou shalt answer. I know thee, Rodrigo. Sir, I will answer anything, but I beseech you, if it be your pleasure or most wise consent, as partly I find it is, that your fair daughter at this odd even in dull watch the night, transported, with no worse nor better guard, but with a knave of common hire, a gondolier, to the gross clasps of a lascivious moor. If this be known to you and your allowance, then we have done you bold and saucy wrongs. But if you know not this, my manners tell me we have your wrong rebuke. Straight, satisfy yourself. If she be in her chamber or in your house, let loose on me the justice of the state for thus deluding you. Strike up the tinder, ho! Give me a taper. Call up all my people. This accident is not unlike my dream. Belief of it oppresses me already. Light, I say, light! Farewell, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced, as if I stay I shall against the moor, though I do hate him as I do hell pains. Yet for necessity of present life, I must show out a flag and sign of love, which is indeed but sign you shall surely find him, lead to the sagittary the rays in search, and there shall I be with him. So farewell. It is too true and evil. Gone she is. And what's to come of my despised time is naught but bitterness. Now, Rodrigo, where didst thou see her, O oh, unhappy girl? With the more, sayest thou? Are they married, think you? Truly, I think they are. Oh, heaven, how got she out? Is there not charms by which the property of youth and maidhood may be abused? Have you not read, Rodrigo, of such things? Yes, sir, I have indeed. Oh, would you had had her. <laughs> Do you know where we may apprehend her in the mall? I think I can discover him, if you go along with me. Pray you. Lead on, good Rodrigo. I shall deserve your pains. and spoke such scurvy and provoking terms against your honor that with the little godliness I have, I did full heart forbear him. But I pray you, sir, are you fast married? 
he will divorce you or put upon you what restraint and grievance the law with all his might to enforce on will give him cable. Let him do his spite. My services which I have provided the scenery shall out-tongue his complaints. But look, what light comes yon? Those are the raised father and his friends. You were best go in. Not I. My parts my, and my perfect soul shall manifest me rightly. But look, is it there? <laughs> By Janus, I uh, think no. My lieutenant, good the of the night upon you, friend. What says the news? Oh, the Duke does greet you, General. And he requires your haste, post-haste appearance, even on the instant. What is the matter, think you? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. Oh, this business of some heat. You have been hotly called for when, being not at your lodging to be found, the Duke hath sent about three several guests to search you out. Tis well I am found by you. I will spend but a word here in the house and go with you. Page, what makes he here? <laughs> Faith, he tonight hath boarded a land carack. If it prove lawful prize, he's made forever. I do not understand. <sighs> He's married. <laughs> to who? Married to... Oh, come, Captain, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek for you. It is Brabantio. General, be advised, he comes to bad intent. Hola, stand there. Senor, it is the moor. Down with him, thief! You, Rodrigo, come, sir, I am for you. Keep up your bright swords, for the dew will rust them. Good senor. Shall more command with years than with your weapons. Oh, thou foul thief! Where hast thou stirred my daughter? Damned as thou art! Thou hast enchanted her if she run from her guardage to the sooty bosom of such a thing as thou! Lay hold on here! Ah! Hold your hands! Both you of mine climbing and the rest. Were it my cue to fight, I should have known it without a prompter. Where will you that I go to answer this short charge? To prison! Till fit time of law and course of direct session, call thee to answer. Hmm. How may the Duke be there with satisfied, whose messenger is here about my side, upon some present business of the state to bring me to him? Tis true, most worthy senor. The Duke's in council and your noble self, I am sure, is sent for. How? The Duke in council at this hour of the night? Bring him away. Nay, it is possible enough for judgment. I do not so secure me in the air, but the main article I do approve in a fearful sense. What ho! What ho! What ho! A messenger from the galleys! Oh, now what's the business? <clears throat> a Turkish preparation makes for roads, so as I bid report here to the state. Now what say you by this change? This cannot be when we consider the importancy of Cyprus to the Turk. Nay, in all confidence, he is not for Rhodes. Well, but here is more news. The Ottomites, reverend and gracious, steering with due course towards the Isle of Rhodes, have there enjointed them with an afterfleet. Aye, so I thought. How many, as you guess? Of thirty sail. And now they do extend their backward course, bearing with frank appearance their purposes towards Cyprus. Oh, it's certain then, for Cyprus! Brabantio in the Valley of Moor! Valiant Othello, we must straight implore you against the general enemy Ottoman. <laughs> I did not see you, gentle senor. Welcome. We lacked your counsel and your help tonight. So did I yours, good your grace. Pardon me. But neither my place nor aught I heard of business hath raised me from my bed. Why? What's the matter? My daughter. <laughs> My daughter. What, dead? I, to me, she is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicines. Whoever he be that in this foul proceeding hath beguiled your daughter of herself and you of her, the bloody book of law you shall yourself read of the bitter letter after your own sense. Humbly, I thank your grace. Here is the man, this Moor, whom now it seems your special mandate for the state affairs hath hither brought. What in your own part can you say to this? Nothing, but it is so. 
most potent grave and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters, that I have taken this old man's daughter. Tis true, most true. The very head in front of my offending hath this extent no more. Yet, by your gracious patience, I shall a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, <laughs> what charms, what conjurations, what mighty magic. For such proceedings I am charged with all, I won his daughter. I vouch again that with some mixtures powerful of the blood, or some dram conjured to this effect, he hath wrought upon her. To vouch this is no proof without more wider and more avert tests than these thin habits and poor likelihoods of modern do seeming to present against him. But Othello, speak. Did you, by indirect and forced courses, pursue and poison this young maid's affections? Or came it by request and such fair question as soul to soul affordeth? I do beseech thee. Send for the lady to the Sagittary. Let her speak of me before her father. If you do find me foul in her report, the trust, the office that I do hold of you, not only take away, but let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch testimony ever. Ancient, conduct them. You best know the place. And till she come as truly as to heaven, I do confess the vices of my blood. So justly to your grave ears I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love, and she in mine. Say it, Othello. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year. The battles, the sieges, the fortunes that I have passed. So I ran it through, even from my boyish days to the very moment he bade me tell it wherein I spake of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth escapes and even in deadly breach. This to hear Desdemona would seriously incline and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse. And often did I beguile her of her tears when I did speak of some distressful stroke my youth had suffered. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She sworn and faith, twas strange, twas passing strange, twas pitiful, yet wondrous pitiful. She wished that heaven had made her such a man, yet she wished that she had never heard it. She loved me for the dangers that I had passed, and I love her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft that I use. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. I think this tale would win my daughter to good Brabantio. Take this mangled matter at the best. Men do rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Pray thee, hear her speak. Come hither, gentle mistress. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess due to the more, my lord. God be with you. I have done. Please it, your grace, on to the state affairs. I had rather to adopt a child than get it. Come hither, more. I here do give thee that with all my heart, which but thou hast already, with all my heart I would keep from thee. Let me speak like yourself and lay a sentence, which is a grace or a step may help these lovers into your favor. When remedies are past, 
The griefs are ended by seeing the worst which late on hopes depended. To mourn a mischief that is past and gone is the next way to draw a new mischief on. What cannot be preserved, fortune takes. Patience her injury a mockery makes. The rob that smiles steals something from the thief. He robs himself that spends a bootless grief. Humbly I beseech thee, on to the affairs of state. The Turks with the most mighty preparation make for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of this place is best known to you. You must therefore be content with this most stubborn and boisterous expedition. Most great senators, I do undertake these present wars against the Artemites. So humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit this position for my wife, with such accommodation and resort as levels with her breeding. But if you please, be it at her father's. I will not have it, sir. Nor I. Nor I. I would not there reside to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious duke. To my unfolding, lend your prosperous ear. And let me find a charter in your voice to assist my simpleness. <laughs> what would you, Desdemona? That I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and scorn of fortunes may trumpet to the world. I saw Othello's visage in his mind. And to his honor and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear gentles, if I be left behind a moth of peace and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me, and I a heavy interim shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. Let her have your voice. Oh, be it as you shall privately determine, whether it to stay or going, the affair requires haste, and speed must answer it. You must away tonight. With all my heart. At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind, and he shall our commission bring to you of things else of quality and respect as doth implore you. So please, Your Grace, my ancient, a man he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I assign my wife, with what else need for your good grace shall think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. Good night. And gentle signor, if virtue no delighted beauty lack, your son-in-law is far more fair than black. A do brave more, use Desdemona well. Look to her more, if thou hast eyes to see. She has betrayed her father, and may thee. My life upon her faith. Criado, my Desdemona must I leave to thee, I pray thee, that your wife attend on her and bring them after in the best advantage. Come, Desdemona, we have but an hour of love, of worldly matter, and the direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. What sayest thou, noble heart? What will I do, thinkest thou? Why, go to bed and sleep. I will incontinently drown myself. <laughs> if thou dost, I shall never love thee after. Why, thou silly gentleman. It is silliness to live, when to live is torment. And then we have a prescription to die when death is our physician. Oh, villainous. I have looked upon the world for near 47 years. And since I could distinguish betwixt a benefit and an injury, I never found man that knew how to love himself. Ere I would say I would drown myself for the love of a guinea hen, I would change my humanity with a baboon. What will I do? I confess it is my shame to be so fond, but... It's not my virtue to amend it. Virtue? Ah, fig. Tis in ourselves that we are thus or thus. 
If the balance of our lives had not one scale of reason to poise another of sensuality, the blood and baseness of our natures would conduct us to most preposterous conclusions. But we have reason to call our raging motions, our carnal stings, our unbitted lusts. Whereof I take this that you call love to be a sect or scion. It cannot be. It is merely a lust of the blood and a permission of the will. Come, be a man. Drown thyself. Drown cats and blind puppies. I profess me thy friend, and I confess me knit to thy deserving with cables of adorable toughness. I could never better stead thee than now. Put money in thy purse. Follow thou the wars. Defeat thy favor with an usurped beard. I say, put money in thy purse. It cannot be that Desdemona should long continue her love to the moor. She must change for youth. When she is sated with his body, she must have changed. She must. Therefore, put money in thy purse. If thou wilt needs damn thyself, do it a more delicate way than drowning. Make all the money thou canst. If sanctimony and a frail vow betwixt an erring barbarian and a super subtle Venetian be not too hard for my wits and all the tribe of hell, thou shalt enjoy her. Therefore make money. A pox of drowning thyself. It is clean out of the way. Seek thou rather to be hanged, encompassing thy joy than to be drowned and go without her. Wilt thou be fast to my hopes, if I depend on the issue? Thou art sure of me. Go, make money. I have told thee often, and I retell thee again and again, I hate the more. My cause is hearted. Thine hath no less reason. Let us be conjunctive in our revenge against him. If thou canst cuckold him, thou dost thyself a pleasure, me a sport. There are many events in the womb of time which will be delivered. Travers, go, provide thy money. We will have more of this tomorrow. Where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodging. I'll be with thee betimes. <laughs> go to, farewell. Do you hear, Rodrigo? What? Say you? No more of drowning. Do you hear? I'm changed. I'm going to sell all my land. I'm going to put money in my purse. <laughs> Do I ever make my fool my purse? For I mine own gained knowledge should profane if I would time expend with such a snipe but for my sport and profit. I hate the moor. And it is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he has done my office. I know not if it be true, but I for mere suspicion in that kind will do as if for surety. <laughs> he holds me well. The better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let me see now. To get his place and to plume up my will in double knavery. How? How? After some time to abuse Othello's ear that he is too familiar with his wife. He hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected and framed to make women false. The more is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so, and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have it. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light.
he will shift. His bark is stoutly timbered, and his pilot is a very expert and approved allowance. Therefore, my hopes, not surfeited to death, stand in bold cure. What a horror! What noise! The town is empty. On the brow of the sea stand ranks of people, and they all cry, A sail! A sail! I pray you, sir, go forth. I shall. But, good lieutenant, is your general alive? Most fortunately, he hath achieved a maid the paragon's description and wild fame, one that oh, excels in the essential vesture of creation, and, I must say, does tire the engineer. How now? Who has put in? Tis one Iago, ancient to the general, has had most favorable and happy speed. Oh, tempest themselves, high seas and howling winds, guttered rocks and congregated sands, traitors and steep to clog the guiltless keel, as having sense of beauty do omit their mortal natures, letting go by safely the divine Desdemona. What is she? Oh, is she that I spake of, our great captain's captain, left in the conduct of bold Iago. Oh, behold! The riches of the ship have come ashore. Hail to thee, lady. I thank you, valiant Cassio. What tidings can you tell me of my lord? Oh, he's not yet arrived, nor know I aught but that he is well and will be here shortly. Oh, but I fear I lost your company. The great contention of the sea and skies parted our fellowship. But well, hark, a sail! Sail! Oh, they give the greetings to the citadel. This likewise is a friend. See for the news. Oh, good ancient, you are welcome. Oh, welcome, mistress. Let it not go your patience, good Iago, that I extend my manners. Tis my greeting that allows me this bold show of courtesy. <clears throat> Sir, would she give you so much of her lips as of her tongue she oft bestows on me, oh. you'll have enough. <laughs> Alas, she has no speech. In faith, too much. I find it still when I have list to sleep. <laughs> Mary, before your ladyship, I grant she puts her tongue a little in her heart and chides with thinking. You have little <laughs> cause to say so. Come on, come on. You are pictures out of doors, bells in your parlors, <laughs> wildcats in your kitchens, saints in your injuries, devils being offended, players in your housewifery, and housewives in your beds. <laughs> <laughs> Fie upon thee, slanderer. Nay, it is true, or else I am a Turk. You rise to play and go to bed to work. <laughs> you shall not write my praise. No, let me not. What would thou write of me if thou shouldst praise me? Oh, 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 gentle lady, put me not to it, for I am nothing if not critical. Come on, a say. There's one gone to the harbor? Aye, madam. I am not merry, but I do beguile the thing I am by seeming otherwise. Come, how wouldst thou praise me? I am about it. But indeed, my invention comes from my pate as bird lime does from freeze. It plucks out brains and all. <laughs> <laughs> but my muse labors, and thus she is delivered. If she be fair and wise, fairness and wit, the one's for use, the other useth it. <laughs> <laughs> Do not learn of him, Amelia, though he be thy husband. How say you, Cassio? Is he not a most profane and liberal counselor? Oh, he speaks home, madam. You may relish him more in the soldier than in the scholar. <laughs> <laughs> he takes her by the palm. I well said, whisper. With as little web as this will I ensnare as great a fly as Cassio. I smile upon her, do. I will jive thee in thine own courtship. Oh, you say true, tis so indeed. If such tricks as these strip you out of your lieutenantry, it had been better you had not kissed your three fingers so oft, which now again you are most apt to play the sir in. Very good, well kissed, an excellent courtesy, tis so indeed. Yet again your fingers to your lips, would they were clister pipes for your sake. The more! I know his trumpet. Tis truly so. Let's meet him and receive him. Lo, where he comes. <laughs> oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. It 
gives me wonder, great is my content to see you here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest comes such calms, may the winds blow till they have wakened death. And the heavens forbid, but that our loves and comforts should increase, even as our days do grow. Oh, amen to that, sweet powers. I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. And this, and this, our greatest discords be. <laughs> that ever our hearts shall make. Oh, you are well tuned now. But I'll set down the pegs that make this music as honest as I am. Come, let us to the castle. News, friends. Our wars are done. The Turks are drowned. <laughs> Good Iago, I prithee. Go to the bay and disembark my coffers. Come, Desdemona. Once more, well met at Cyprus. Come hither. If thou beest valiant, as they say, base men, being in love, have done a nobility in their natures more than is native to them. List me. The lieutenant watches tonight on the court of guard. First, I must tell thee this. Desdemona is directly in love with him. With him. Which is not possible. The knave is young, handsome and hath all those requisites in him that folly and green minds look after. A pestilent, complete knave, and the woman hath found him already. I cannot believe that in her. She's full of most blessed condition. Blessed figs end. The wine she drinks is made of grapes. If she had been blessed, she would never have loved the more. Blessed pudding. Didst thou not see her paddle with the palm of his hand? Didst not mark that? Yes, that I did. But that was but courtesy. Lechery by this hand. An index, an obscure prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. Why, they met so near with their lips that their breaths embraced together. But, sir, be you ruled by me. I have brought you from Venice. Watch you tonight for the command. I'll lay it upon you. Cassio knows you not. I'll not be far from you. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio, either by speaking too loud or tainting his discipline, or from what other means you please? as the time shall more favorably minister. Well, sir, he is very rash and sudden in color, and haply may strike at you, provoke him that he may. For even out of that, why cause these of Cyprus to mutiny, whose qualification shall come into no true taste again, but by the displanting of Cassio. I'll do this, if I can bring it to any opportunity. I warrant thee, meet me by and by at the citadel, I must fetch his necessaries ashore. Farewell. Adieu. Splanting Cassio. <laughs> that Cassio loves her, I do well believe it. That she loves him, tis apt and of great credit. The more, howbeit that I endure him not, is of a constant, loving, noble nature. And I dare think he'll prove to Desdemona a most dear husband. Now, I do love her too. Not out of absolute lust, though peradventure I stand accountant for as great a sin, that partly led to diet my revenge. For I do suspect the lusty moor hath leaped into my seat. The thought whereof doth like a poisonous mineral gnaw my innards, and nothing can or shall content my soul 
until I am evened with him, wife for wife. Or, failing so, yet that I at least put the more into a jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. Which thing to do if this poor trash of Venice, whom I trash for his quick hunting, stand the putting on? I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip, abuse him to the moor in the rank garb, for I fear Cassio with my nightcap too. <laughs> Make the moor thank me, love me, and reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet, even to madness. It is here, but yet confused. Knavery's plain face is never seen till used. Michael, look at you the watch. Let's teach ourselves that honorable stop not to outsport discretion. We all go half direction what to do, but notwithstanding, with my personal eye, I will look to it. Iago is most honest. Michael, good night, and tomorrow with your earliest, let me have speech with you. Come, Desdemona. The purchase made. The fruits are to and to, that profit's yet to come between me and you. Good night. Welcome, Iago. Oh, we must to the watch. How? Oh, not this hour, Lieutenant. It is not yet ten of the clock. Our general cast us thus early for the love of his Desdemona. Who oh, let us therefore not blame? He hath not yet made want in the night with her. And she is sport for Jove. Oh, indeed, she is an exquisite lady. What an eye she has. Methinks it sounds a parley to provocation. Oh, an inviting eye. Oh, but yet methinks right modest. Oh, and when she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? Oh, she is indeed perfection. <laughs> well, happiness to their sheets. Come, Lieutenant. I have a stoop of wine. And here without our brace of cypress gallants that would fain have a measure to the health of Black Othello. Oh, not tonight, Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. Oh, I could well wish courtesy would invent some other custom of entertainment. Oh, they are our friends, but one cup I'll drink for you. I have had but one cup tonight already, and that was craftily qualified too. Behold, what innovation it makes here. I am unfortunate in the infirmity and dare not task my weakness with any more. Come, sir, tis a night of revels. The gallants desire it. Where are they? Here at the door, I pray you, call them in. I'll do it, but it dislikes me. If I can fix but one cup on him, which that which he hath drunk tonight already, he'll be as full of quarrel and offense as my young mistress dog. Now, my sick fool Rodrigo, whom love hath turned almost the wrong side out, to Desdemona hath tonight caroused, potations puddle deep, and he's to watch. Three lads of Cyprus, noble swelling spirits that hold their honors in a wary distance. The very element of this warlike isle have I tonight flustered with flowing cups, and they watch too. Now, amongst this flock of drunkards, am I to put our Cassio in some action that may offend the isle? <laughs> but here they come. If consequence do but approve my dream, my boat sails freely <laughs> both with wind and stream. <laughs> oh, before God, they have given me a rouse already. Oh, good faith, a little one not past a pint as I am a soldier. <laughs> Some wine, ho! Oh. Ah. Let me the cannon clink, clink, and let me the cannon clink. 
A soldier's a man, a life's but a span. Why then let a soldier drink? Why then let a soldier drink? Again. And let me the cannon can clink, clink, and let me the cannon can clink. A soldier's a man, a life's but a span. Why then let a soldier drink? Why then let a soldier drink? <laughs> Oh God, an excellent song. I learned it in England, where indeed they are most potent in potting. Your Dane, your German, and your swag-bellied Hollander drink, ho! Oh, are nothing to your English. Oh, is your Englishman so expert in his drinking? Why, he drinks you with facility, your Dane dead drunk. He sweats not to overthrow your Almain. He gives your Hollander a... Vomit! <laughs> <laughs> to the health of our general! Oh, I am for it, Lieutenant, and I'll do you justice! <laughs> Will you hear it again? No! 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 For I hold him unworthy of his place that does those things. Well, God's above all, oh, there be souls must be saved, and souls must not be saved. That's true, good Lieutenant. For mine own part, no offense to the general, nor any man of quality. I hope to be saved. Oh, so do I do, <laughs> Lieutenant. Of course, I, but by your leave, before me, the Lieutenant is to be saved before the Ancient. Oh. 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 Let's have no more of this. Let's look to our affairs. Forgive us our sins. <laughs> gentlemen, let's look to our business. Do not think, gentlemen. I'm drunk. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, this is my ancient. This is my right hand. Oh, this is my left. <laughs> I'm not drunk now. I can stand well enough and speak well enough. Oh, <laughs> excellent well. Oh, very well then. You must not then think that I am drunk. <sighs> to the platform, masters. Come, let's set the watch. Can let me the cannon drink. A soldier's a span of life's but a man. I'm a soldier. Drink. You see this fellow that has gone before? He is a soldier fit to stand by Caesar and give direction, and do but see his vice. Tis to his virtue a just equinox, the one as long as the other. Tis pity of him. I do fear the trust Othello puts him in on some odd time of his infirmity will shake this island. But is he often thus? Tis evermore the prologue to his sleep. He'll watch the horror log a double set if drink rock not his cradle. It were well the general were put in mind of it. Perhaps he sees it not, or his good nature prizes the virtue that appears in Cassio and looks not on his evils. Is not this true? <laughs> oh, now, Rodrigo, after the lieutenant, go! And, and tis great pity the noble Moor should hazard such a place as his own second with one of an engraft infirmity. It were an honest action to say so to the more. Oh, not I for this fair island. I do love Cassio well and would do much to cure him of this evil. But, hark, what noise. <laughs> you rogue! Oh, you rascal! <laughs> What's the matter, Lieutenant? A knave? Oh, teach me my duty. I'll beat the knave into a twig and bottle. Knave! Uh, <laughs> no, great rogue! Nay, good lieutenant! Do not, I pray you, sir, hold your hand! Oh, let me go, sir, I'll knock you over the mass! Come, come, you're drunk! Oh, drunk! Oh, no. What is the matter here? True, lieutenant, hold, you will be shamed forever! So as I bleed still, I am hurt to the death! Hold for your lives! Why, how, now, ho, from whence ariseth this? Are we turned Turks? And to ourselves do that which heaven hath forbid the Ottomites? What is the matter, masters? Honest Diago, that lookest dead with grieving, speak, who began it? On thy love I charge thee. I do not know. I cannot speak any beginning to this peevish odds. And would I had in action glorious lost those legs that brought me to a part of it. How comes it, Michael? You are thus forgot? I pray you, sir, pardon me. I cannot be. Worthy Montana, what is the matter that you unleash your reputation thus? Give me answer to it. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger. 
Your officer Yago can inform you of all that I do know, nor know I aught by me that said or done amiss this night, unless self-charity be sometimes a vice, and to defend ourselves it be a sin when violence assails us. No, by heaven! If I once stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Give me to know how this foul rout began. Who set it on? And he that is approved in this offense, though he hath twinned with me both at a birth, shall lose me. Tis monstrous, Iago. Who began it? If partially affined or leagued in office, thou dost deliver more or less than truth, thou art no soldier. Touch me not so near. I had rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. Yet, I persuade myself to speak the truth, shall nothing wrong him. Thus it is, General. Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help, and Cassio following him with determined sword to execute upon him. Sir, this gentleman steps into Cassio and entreats his pause. Myself, the crying fellow, did pursue. When I came back, I found them again at blow and thrust, even as they were when you yourself did part them. More of this matter cannot I report. But, men are men, the best sometimes forget. Though Cassio did some little hurt to him, as men in rage strike those that wish them best, yet surely Cassio, I believe, received from him that fled some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago. Thy honesty and love doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio. I do love thee, but never more the officer of mine. And look, if my gentle love had not been raised up, I'd make thee an example. What's the matter? All's well now, sweeting. Come away to bed. Sir, for your hurts, myself will be thy surgeon. Lead him off. Iago, look with care about the town and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Come, my dear love. Tis a soldier's life to have his balmy slumbers waked with strife. What? Are you hurt, Lieutenant? Oh, I passed all surgery. Mary, heaven forbid! Oh. Reputation. Oh, reputation? <laughs> reputation. Oh, I have lost the immortal part of myself. Oh, that remains a special. Oh, my reputation, Iago, my reputation. Oh, as I am an honest man, I thought you had suffered some bodily wound. There's more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is a most idle and false imposition, oft got without merit and lost without deserving. What, man? There are ways to recover the general again. You are now but cast in his mood. A punishment more in policy than in malice. Sue to him again and he's yours. I would rather sue to be despised than to deceive so good a commander. Of so slight, so drunk, and so indiscreet an officer. Oh, thou invisible spirit of wine, if thou hast no name, let us call thee devil. What was he that you followed with your sword? What had he done to you? I don't know. It's possible. I remember a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. A quarrel, yes, but nothing wherefore. Oh, God, men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. Oh, come, come. You seem well enough now. How came you thus recovered? Devil's drunkenness gives way to the devil's wrath. One imperfectness shows me another, makes me frankly despise myself. Come, um, you are too severe a moraler. As the time, the place, and the condition of this country stands, I could heartily wish this had not befallen. But since it is as it is, mend it for your own good. I'll ask him for my place again. He will tell me I am a drunkard. As I had as many mouths as a hydra, such an answer would stop them all. Come, um, good wine is a good familiar creature if it be well used. Exclaim no more against it. 
And good lieutenant, I think you think I love you. I've well approved it, sir. I drunk. Why, any man living may be drunk at a time, man. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. This broken joint between you and her husband, entreat her to splinter. And my fortunes against any lay worth naming, this crack of your love will grow stronger than it was before. You advise me well. I protest in the sincerity of love and honest kindness. I think it freely, and betimes in the morning I will beseech the virtuous Desdemony to undertake for me. I am desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night, Iago. What's he then that says I play the villain? When this advice is free, I give and honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again. For tis most easy the inclining Desdemona to subdue in any honest suit. She's framed as fruitful as the free elements. And then for her to win the more, were it to renounce his baptism, all seals and symbols of redeemed sin. His soul is so enfettered to her love that she may make, unmake, to what she list, even as her appetite shall play the god with his weak function. <laughs> How am I then a villain to counsel Cassio to this parallel course directly to his good? <laughs> ah, divinity of hell! When devils will the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For while this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, I'll pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repeals him for her body's lust. And by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the more. So will I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. Oh, how now, Rodrigo? I do follow here in the chase. Not like a hound that hunts, but one that fills up the cry. My money is almost spent. I've been tonight exceedingly well cudgeled, and I think the issue will be I shall receive so much experience for my pains. And so with no money left at all, and a little more wit, return again to Venice. How poor are they that have not patience? What wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest we work by wit and not by witchcraft, and wit depends on dilatory time. Dost not go well? Cassio hath beaten thee, and thou by that small hurt hast cashiered Cassio. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, get thee gone. Cashier, <laughs> Cassio. Two things are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. I'll set her on. Myself the while to draw the more apart and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. <laughs> That's the way. Do not device by coldness and delay. Dost thou hear, my honest friend? 
No, I hear not, your honest friend. I hear you. <laughs> oh, prithee, keep up thy quillets. There's a poor piece of gold in it for thee. <laughs> it's the gentlewoman that attends the general's wife, be stirring. Tell her there's one Cassio. Entreats her a little favor of speech. Wilt thou do this? She is stirring, sir. If she will stir hither, I shall seem to notify unto her. Do, good my friend. <laughs> In happy time, Iago. You have not been a bed then? Oh, I know. The day had broke before we parted. I have made bold, Iago, to send him to your wife. My suit to her is that you virtuous Desdemona, she will procure me some access. And I'll devise a mean to draw the more out of the way, that your business and converse may be more free. <laughs> oh, I humbly thank you for it. Oh, I have never known a Florentine more kind and honest. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I am sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it now, and she speaks for you stoutly. The more replies that he that you heard is of great fame in Cyprus and great affinity, and that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you. But he protests he loves you and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front to bring you in again. Yet I beseech you, if you think it fit, or that it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemona alone. Pray you, come in. I will bestow you where you shall have some time to speak to your bosom freely. I have much found it. Be thou assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Good madam, do I warrant it grieves my husband as if the case were his. Ah, oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bounteous, madam. Oh, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio. He is never anything but your true servant. I know it. I thank you for it. You do love my lord. You have known him long. And be you well assured he shall in strangeness stand no further off than in a polite distance. Aye, but lady, that policy may last so long. I, being absent and my place supplied, my general will forget my love and service. Do not doubt that. Before Amelia here, I give thee warrant of thy place. Assure thee, if I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Look where he comes, madam. <sighs> madam, I'll take my leave. Why stay and hear me speak? Not now, madam. I'm very ill at ease. I'm fit for my own purposes. Well... Do your discretion. Ha! Huh. I like not that. What's thou say, Iago? Well, nothing, my lord, or if I know not what. Was that not Cassio that parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord, no, sure. I cannot think it that he would steal away so guilty-like seeing you coming. I do think it was he. How now, my lord? I've been talking with a suitor here. A man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your Lieutenant Cassio. Good my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, why, I have no judgment in an honest face. I prithee, call him back. Went he hence now? I sooth. So humble that he hath left part of his grief with me to bear for him. Good love, call him back. Not now, some other time. But shalt be shortly. Oh, the sooner, sweet, for you. Shalt be tonight at dinner. No, not tonight. Tomorrow, supper, then. We shall not dine at home. We meet the captains at the Citadel. Well, then, tomorrow night. Or, or Tuesday morn. On Tuesday noon. Or night. On Wednesday <laughs> morn. I pray thee name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith he's penitent, but shall he come? Tell me, Othello, I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny, or stand so mammering on. <laughs> I pray thee, no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Oh, nay, this is not a boon. When I have a suit wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of poise and difficult weight and fearful to be granted. 
I will deny thee nothing. Wherein I do beseech thee, grant me this. Leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. I will come to thee straight. Farewell. Amelia, come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whate'er you be, I am obedient. <laughs> Excellent wretch. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos has come again. My noble lord. What's that, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did, from first to last. Why dost thou ask? But for a satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why of thy thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Yes, and went between us very often. <laughs> indeed. Indeed, I indeed. The son of thou art in that. Is he not honest? Honest, my lord? Honest, I honest. My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Think, my lord. Think, my lord. By heaven, he echoes me as if there was a monster in his brain too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say even now thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. And when I told thee he was of my counsel through my whole course of wooing, thou criest indeed, and did contract and purse thy brow together as if thou hadst shut up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost. And thou art full of love and honesty, and therefore weighest thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore, these stops of thine fright me the more. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn, I think he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, and those that be not, would they might seem none. Certain. Men should be what they seem. Why, then I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, there's more to this. I prithee, speak to me as thy thinking, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good, my lord. <laughs> Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to utter my thoughts. Why say they are vile and false? Who has a breast so pure but some uncleanly apprehensions in session sit with meditations lawful? Uh, thou dost conspire against thy friend, Iago, if thou thinkest him wrong and makest his ear a stranger to thy thoughts. I do beseech your honor. I perchance am vicious in my guess, but I do not think it was for your quiet nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thoughts. What does that mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of the souls. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing, t'was mine, tis his. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thought. You cannot, if my heart were in your hand, nor shall not whilst tis in my custody. <laughs> oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mark the meat it feeds on. Oh, misery. misery. Poor and content is rich and rich enough, but rich as fineless is as poor as winter to him that ever fears he shall be poor. Oh, good heavens, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why is this? Thinkest thou I would make a lie of jealousy? To follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? No, to be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the slightest fear or doubt of her revolt. She had eyes and chose me. Look, Iago, I'll see before I doubt. And when I doubt, I'll prove. And on that proof, there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I am glad of it. For now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. 
Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eye thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. In Venice, they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Dost thou say so, Iago? She did deceive her father marrying you, and when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. So she did. Why go to then? She that so young could give out such a seeming to seal her father's eyes up close as oak. <laughs> he thought twas witchcraft. But I am much to blame. I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I am bound to thee forever. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot. Not a jot. In faith, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love, but I do see you're moved. I am to pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech should fall into such vile success as my thoughts aim not at. Cassio's my worthy friend. My lord, I see you're moved. Not much moved. I do not but think Desdemona's honest. Long live she so. And long live you to think so. And yet, how nature erring itself. Aye, there's the point. But pardon me, I do not in position distinctly speak of her. Though I may fear her will, recoiling to her better judgment, may fall to match you with her country forms, and haply repent. Farewell, farewell. If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on thy wife to observe. Leave me, Iago. My lord, I take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature sees and knows more, much more than he unfolds. My lord, I would I might entreat your honor to scan this thing no further. Leave it to time. Though it be fit that Cassio have his place, for sure he fills it up with great ability. Yet if you please to hold him off a while, you shall by that perceive him and his means. Note if your lady strain his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity. Much will be seen in that. In the meantime, let me be thought too busy in my fears, as worthy cause I have to fear I am and hold her free, I do beseech your honor. Fear not my government. I once more take my leave. This man, this man's of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities of a learned spirit with human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, I'll whistle her off and set her down the wind to pray at fortune. O oh, curse of marriage. If we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites, I'd rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than to keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. Desdemona comes. If she be false, then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello? Your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Swim away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour, it will be gone. Your handkerchief is too little. Here, let it alone. Come, I'll go in with you. I'm very sorry that you're not well. Glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it, but she so loves the token. For he conjured her she ever should keep it. 
but she reserves it about herself evermore to kiss and talk to. I'll have the work taken out and give it to Iago. What he'll do with it, heaven knows, not I. I nothing but to please his fantasy. How now? What do you hear alone? Do not you chide. I have a thing for you. Oh, a thing for me? It is a common thing uh. to have a foolish wife. Oh, is that all? <clears throat> what will you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? Oh, what handkerchief? Why, that the more first gave Desdemona that which so often you did bid me steal. <laughs> Has stolen it from her. No, faith, she let it drop by negligence and to the advantage. I being here to pick it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. <laughs> Give it me. What would you do with it if you had been so earnest to have me filch it? Why? What's that to you? If it be not for some cause of import, give it me again. You know, poor lady, she'll run mad when she'll lack it. Be not known on it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. <laughs> Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. <laughs> the more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons, which at the first are scarce found to distaste. But with a little act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulfur. I did say so. <laughs> Look where he comes. Not poppy, nor mandragora, nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou owedst yesterday. Ha! Huh. False to me? How now, General? No more of that. Avant, be gone. Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear, it is better to be much abused than to know it a little. How now, my lord? What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, and how I'm not me. I slept the next night. Well, I was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it, and he is not robbed at all. I am sorry to hear this. I had been happy had the general camp, pioneers and all had tasted a sweet body, so I had nothing known. No, now and forever, farewell the tranquil mind, farewell content, farewell the plumed troop and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Oh, farewell. Farewell the named steed and the shrill trump, the ear-piercing fife, the royal banner and all pride, pomp, quality, and circumstance of glorious war. Oh, farewell. Othello's occupation is gone. It is possible, my lord. Villain, be sure thou provest my love a whore. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof, for by the worth of man's eternal soul, thou hadst better been born a dog than to answer my wicked wrath. Come to this. Make me to see it. Or at the least so prove it that the probation bear no hinge nor loop to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life, my noble lord! Thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Abandon all remorse. On horror's heads, horrors accumulate. Do deeds that make heaven wait for all earth the maids. Nothing can stand to damnation add greater than that. <coughs> God be with you. Take mine office. O oh, wretched fool. It lives to make thine honesty a vice. O oh, monstrous world! Take note, take note, O oh world, to be direct and honest is not safe. I thank you for this prophet, and from hence I'll love no friend, since love breeds such offense. Nay, stay, thou should be honest. I should be wise, for honesty's a fool and loses that it works for. 
by the world. I think my wife be honest, and I think she is not. I think that thou art just and think thou art not. Now I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. I'll not endure it. Would I were satisfied. I see, sir, you are eaten up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. You would be satisfied. Would? Nay. I will. And may, but how? How satisfied, my lord? Would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on? Behold her top! Oh, death and damnation! It were a tedious difficulty, I think, to bring them to that prospect. What then? How then? What shall I say? Where's satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this. Were they as prime as goats, as hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride, and fools as gross as ignorance made drunk. And yet, I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction. You may have it. Give me a living reason. She's disloyal. <laughs> I do not like the office. But sith I am entered in this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio recently. And being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are kind of men so loose of souls that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary. Let us hide our loves. And then cried, Cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. Oh, monstrous, monstrous! Nay, hey, this was but his dream. This denoted a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt to be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her to pieces. Nay, hey, but be wise. Yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief, I am sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? Oh, if it be that. If it be that, or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh, that the slave had 40,000 lives. One would be too poor, too weak for my revenge. Now do I see it as true. Look, Iago, all my fond love, <laughs> thus do I blow to heaven. It is gone. Arise, black vengeance from thy hollow cell. Nay, be content. Oh, blood, blood, blood. Patience. She may be honest yet. I'll chop her to messes. Cuckled me? Never, Iago. My bloody thoughts with violent pace shall never look back, never ebb to humble love to thou the capable wide revenge swallow them up. Now, by yon marble heaven, in the due reverence of a sacred vow, I here engage my words. Do not rise yet. Witness you ever-burning lights above, you elements that clip us round about, witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wrong Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be me, me remorse. What bloody business ever.
I greet thy love. Not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Let me hear thee say within these three days that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. But let her live. Damn her! Lewd mix? Damn her! Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for that fair devil. Now art thou my lieutenant. I am your own forever. Should I lose that handkerchief, Amelia? I know not, madam. Believe me, I had rather have lost my purse full of crusados. And but my noble moors, true of mind and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are, it were enough to put him to ill thinking. Is not he jealous? Who, he? I think the son where he was born drew all such humors from him. Look where he comes, madam. I will not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. How is it with you, my lord? Well, my good lady, O oh, hardness to dissemble, give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. It yet hath felt no age, nor known no sorrow. Yeah. This argues fruitfulness in a liberal heart. Hot, hot and moist. This hand requires a sequester from liberty. It is a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, for t'was that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. The hearts of old gave hands. But our new heraldry is hands, not hearts. I cannot speak of this. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent a big Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sorry room offends me. Lend me the handkerchief. Here it is, my lord. That which I gave you. I have it not about me. Not? No, indeed, my lord. That is a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer that could sometimes read the thoughts of people. She told her that while she kept it, it would make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But. If she lost it, or made gift of it, my father's eyes should hold her load, and his spirits would hunt after new fancies. Take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eye. To lose it, or give it away, was such perdition as nothing else could match. Is it possible? It's true. There's magic in the web of it. A sibyl that numbered in the world the sun to cause 200 compasses in a prophetic fury so the work. Indeed, it's true. Most veritable. Therefore, look to it well. And would to God that I'd never see it. Ha! Wherefore? Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? Is it lost? Is it gone? 
Speak. Is it out of the way? Oh, heaven bless us. Say you? It is not lost. But what and if it were? Fetch it. Let me see it. Why, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. I pray you let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief. My mind misgives. Come, come. You'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief. I pray you talk me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love. She had dead. The handkerchief. And so you are to blame. Swoons. Is not this man jealous? I never have seen this before. Sure, there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Tis but a year or two shows us a man. They are all but stomachs, and we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and when they are full, they belch us. Look you, Cassio, and my husband. There is no other way. Tis she must do it. And lo, the happiness. Go and importune her. How now, good Cassio, what's the news with you? Madam, my former suit. I do beseech that by your virtuous means I may again exist and be a member of his love, whom I, with all the office of my heart, entirely honor. I would not be delayed. Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, my advocation is not now in tune. My lord is not my lord, nor should I know him were he in favor as in humor altered. So help me every spirit sanctified as I've spoken for you all my best and stood within the blank of his displeasure for my free speech. You must a while be patient. What I can do, I will. And more I will than for myself I dare. Let that suffice you. Is my lord angry? He went hence but now, and certainly in strange and quietness. Can he be angry? I have seen the cannon when it hath blown his ranks into the air, and like the devil from his very arm puffed his own brother. Can he be angry? Something of moment. I will go meet him. There's matter in indeed if he be angry. Prithee do so. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him, hath puddled his clear spirit, and in such cases, men's natures wrangle with inferior things, though great ones are their objects. Pray heaven it be state matters, as you think, with no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Alas, the day I never gave him cause. But jealous minds will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for they are jealous. Tis a monster begot upon itself, born on itself. Oh, heaven keep that monster from Othello's mind. Lady, amen. I will go seek him. Cassio, walk here about. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit and seek to effect it to my uttermost. I humbly thank your ladyship. Cassio. Oh, Cassio. Save you, friend Cassio. What makes you from home? How is it with you, sweet Bianca? In faith, sweet love, I was coming to your house. And I was going to your lodging, Cassio. What? Keep a week away seven days and nights? Pardon me, Bianca. I have the swell with leaden thoughts been pressed, but I will, in a more continuous time, strike off the score of absence. Sweet Bianca, take me this work out. Oh, Cassio, whence came this? To this is a token from a newer friend, who without absence I now feel a cause. Is it come to this? Well, well? Go to, woman. Throw your vow guesses to the devil's teeth from which you've had them. You are jealous now that this is from some mistress, some remembrance? No, by my faith, Bianca. Why? Whose is it? I know not. I found it in my chamber. I like the work well, and I have it copied. Take it and do it, and leave me for this time. Leave you wherefore? I do attend here on the general, and think it no addition nor my wish to have him see me woman. Why, I pray you. Not that I love you not. But that you do not love me. Bring me on the way a little, and say if I shall see you soon at night. Tis but a little way that I can bring you, for I attend here, and I'll see you soon. Tis very good. I must be circumstanced. <laughs> Will you think so? Think so, Iago? 
What? To kiss in private. An unauthorized kiss. Or to be naked with a friend in bed. An hour or more not meaning any harm. Naked in bed, Iago, and not mean harm? Tis hypocrisy against the devil. They that mean virtuously and yet do so, the devil their virtue tempts, and they tempt heaven. So they do nothing. Tis a venial slip. But if I give my wife a handkerchief, what then? Why then, tis hers, my lord. And being hers, she may, I think, bestow it on any man. She is protectress of her honor, too. May she give that? Her honor is an essence that's not seen. They have it very oft that have it not. But for the handkerchief. I would most gladly have forgot that. He had my handkerchief. Aye, what of that? That is not so good. What if I had said I had seen him do you wrong? Or heard him say... What? Hath he said anything? He hath, my lord. But be you well assured no more than he'll unswear. What hath he said? Faith that he did... I know not what he what? did. What? What? Lie! With her? With her? On her? What you will? With her? On her? We say lie on her when they be lie with her? Swoops. Handkerchiefs? Confessions? Handkerchiefs? It's not the words that shake me thus. Is it possible? Confess, handkerchief, oh, devil. <laughs> work on my medicine work. Thus credulous fools are caught, and many worthy and chaste dames, even thus all guiltless, meet reproach. What ho, my lord, my lord, I say Othello. Well, how now, Cassio? What's the matter? My lord has fallen into an epilepsy. This is his second fit. He had one yesterday. <laughs> Rub him about the temple. No, forbear. The lethargy must have his quiet course. If not, he foams at mouth, and by and by breaks out to set <coughs> madness. <coughs> Look, he stirs. Do you withdraw yourself a little while? He will recover straight. When he is gone, I would on great occasion speak with you. How oh, now, General? Have you not hurt your head? Thou mock me. I mock Argo. you now by heaven. Would you would bear your fortune like a man. A horned man's a monster and a beast. As many a beast then in a populous city and many a civil monster. Did he confess it? Sir, be a man. Think every bearded fellow that's but yoked may draw with you? Oh, tis the spite of hell. The fiend's arch mock to lip a wanton in a secure couch and to suppose a chaste. Now let me know, and knowing what I am, I know what she shall be. Thou art most wise, tis certain. Stand you a while apart. Confine yourself but in a patient list. Whilst you were here overwhelmed with your grief, Cassio came hither. I shifted him away and laid good excuse upon your ecstasy. Bade him anon return and here speak with me. Do but encave yourself and mark the fleers, the jibes, and notable scorns that dwell in every region of his face. For I will make him tell the tale anew. Where, how, how oft, how long ago, when he hath and is again to cope your wife. I say, but mark his gesture. Merry patience. What dost thou hear, Iago? I will be found most cunning in my patience. What dost thou hear? Most bloody. That's not amiss. Yet keep time in all. Will you withdraw? Now will I question Cassio of Bianca. 
a housewife that by selling her desires buys herself bread and clothes. It is a creature that dotes on Cassio, as tis the strumpet's plague to beguile many and be beguiled by one. <laughs> he, when he hears of her, cannot refrain from excess of laughter. <laughs> Here he comes, as he shall smile, Othello shall go mad. And his unbookish jealousy must construe poor Cassio's smiles, gestures, and light behavior quite in the wrong. How do you now, Lieutenant? Oh, the worse is that you give me the addition whose want even kills me now. Fly Desdemona well, and you are sure on it. Now, if the suit lay in Bianca's power, <laughs> how quickly <laughs> should you speed? Alas, poor Kate. <laughs> Look how he laughs already. I never knew woman love man so. <laughs> oh, poor rogue. I think in faith she loves me. <laughs> now he denies it faintly and laughs it out. Do you hear, Cassio? She now gives it out to tell it you shall marry her. Do you intend it? Hi, <laughs> marry her? Oh, what a customer! <laughs> Prithee, bear some charity to my wit. So they laughed at the wind. Faith, the cry goes that you shall marry her. Oh, say true. Oh, I'm a very villain else. You scored me well. <laughs> this is the monkey's own giving out. She is persuaded I will marry her out of her own love and flattery, <laughs> not out of my promise. Now beckons me. Now he begins a story. She haunts me in every place. Well, well, she was here even now. I was the other day on the sea bank talking to certain Venetians when thither comes the bauble, <laughs> and by this hand falls me thus about the neck. <laughs> Crying, oh dear Cassio, as it were, his gesture imports oh, it. She hangs and lolls and weeps, so hails and pulls me. Now he tells how she plucked up to my chamber. Oh, I see that nose of yours, but not the dog I shall throw it to. Oh, Faith, I'm afraid I must leave her company. Before me, look where she comes. Oh, Tis such another fit you married a perfumed one. <laughs> what do you mean by this haunting of me? Let the devil in this damn haunt you. What did you mean by the same handkerchief you gave me even now? I was a fine fool to take it. This is some minx's token. You know what? There. Give it to your hobby horse. Wheresoever you had it. <laughs> oh, now, Bianca. How now? Oh, how now? That should be my handkerchief. You will come to supper tonight. You may, and you will not come when you are next prepared for. <laughs> After her. After her. Oh, in faith, I must. She'll rail in the streets, else. Will you sup there? Oh, in faith, I intend, sir. Any uh, chance to see you, for I would very fain speak with you. Oh, Prithee, come. Will you? Go to. Say no more. How shall I murder him, Iago? Did you perceive how he laughed at his vice? Oh, Iago. And did you see the handkerchief? Was that mine? Yours by this hand. And to see how he prizes the foolish woman your wife? She gave it him, and he hath given it his whore. I'll have him nine years of killing. A fine woman, a fair woman, a sweet woman. Nay, you must forget that. Aye. Let her rot and be damned tonight, for she shall not live. My heart is turned to stone. I strike it. It hurts my hand. That's not your way. Hang her. I do but say what she is. Oh, she's the worst for all this. A thousand, thousand times. But yet so gentle a condition. Aye, too gentle. It is certain. But Diago, pity of Diago. You are so <laughs> fond of her iniquity. Give her patent to offend. For if it touch not you, it comes near nobody. I'll chop her to messes. Cuckold me? Tis foul in her. With mine, officer? That's fouler. Get me some poison. I'll not let her live, or let her body and beauty and provide my mind again. This night, Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. 
Even the bed she hath contaminated. Good, good. The justice of it pleases very good. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You will hear more by midnight. Excellent, good. What trumpet does that sing? Something for Venice, sure. Tis Lodovico come from the Duke. And see, your wife is with him. Save you, worthy general. With all my heart, sir, the Duke and Senators of Venice greet you. I kiss the instruments of their pleasures. And what's the news, good cousin Lodovico? I am very glad to see you, senor. Welcome to Cyprus. I thank you. And how does Lieutenant Cassio? Lives, sir. Cousin, there's fallen between him and my lord an unkind breach. You shall make all well. Are you wise? My lord? This to do... Well, he did not call. He's busy in the paper. Is there a division twixt my lord and Cassio? A most unhappy one. I would do much to atone them for the love I bear to Cassio. Fire and brimstone! My lord. Are you wise? What? Is he angry? For maybe to let her move him, for I think they do command him home, deputing Cassio and his government. Trust me, I'm glad on it. Indeed? My lord. I'm glad to see you, Dad. Why, sweet Othello. Devil! <laughs> I have not deserved this. My lord, this would not be believed in Venice, so I swear I saw it. Tis very much make her amends. She weeps. <laughs> Devil. Devil. That the earth could teem with women's tears, each drop she falls would prove a crocodile. Out of my sight! I will not. Stay to offend you. Truly an obedient lady, I beseech you, Lord, call her back. Mistress. My lord. What will you with her, sir? Who I, my lord? Ah, he did wish that I would make her turn. So she can turn and turn, and yet go on and turn again. And, and she can weep, sir, weep. And, and she's obedient. Obedient, sir, as you say, very obedient. Proceed you in your tears. <laughs> Concerning this, sir, well-painted passion. <laughs> I'm commanded home. Get you away! I'll send for you anon. Sir, I do obey the mandate. And we'll return to Venice. Hence, a fall! <laughs> Sir, Cassio shall have my place. I do entreat, sir, that we may sup together. And, sir, you are most welcome to Cyprus. Goats and monkeys! Is this the noble moor, for my full set of call all in all sufficient? Is this the nature and passion could not shake? He is much changed. Are his wits safe? Is he not light of brain? He is that he is. I may not breathe my censure what he might be. If what he might he is not, I would to heaven he were. What strike his wife? Uh, faith, that was not so well. Yet would I knew that stroke would prove the worst. Is it his use, or did the letters work upon his blood and new create his fault? Alas, alas, it is not honesty in me to speak what I have seen and known. You shall observe him, and his own courses will denote him that I may save my speech. Do but go after, and mark how he continues. I am sorry that I am deceived in him. You have seen nothing then? Nor ever heard, nor ever did suspect. Yes, you did see Cassio and she together. But then I saw no harm, and then I heard each syllable that breath made up between them. What? Did they never whisper? Never, my lord. 
No send you out of the way? Never. To fetch a fan, her gloves, her mask, Never, nothing? Never, my lord. Oh, that's strange. I durst, my lord, to wager she is honest, lay down my soul at stake. If you think other remove the thought, it doth abuse your bosom. If any wretch have put this in your head, may heaven require it with the serpent's curse, for if she be not honest, chaste, and true, there's no man happy. The purest of their wives is foulest slander. Bid her come hither. Go! She says enough yet. She's a simple bard that cannot say as much. This, well, this is a subtle whore. Closet lock and key of villainous secrets, yet she'll kneel and pray. I've seen her do it. My lord, what is your will? Pray, Chuck. Come hither. What is your pleasure? Let me see your eyes. Look into my face. Oh! What horrible fancy is this? Son of your function, mistress! Leave procreants alone and shut the door. Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Why? What art thou? Your wife, my lord. Your true and loyal wife. Come, swear it. Damn thyself. Swear thou art honest. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven doth truly know it. Thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord? With whom? How am I false? Best moan away. Away. Last the heavy day, why do you weep? Am I the motive of these tears, my lord? If haply you, my father, do suspect an instrument of this you're calling back, lay not your blame on me. If you have lost him, why, I have lost him too. Had it pleased heaven to try me with some affliction, I should have found in my soul some place a drop of patience. But alas, for him to make me a fixed figure for time or scorn to point his slow, unmoving finger at. I hope my noble lord esteems me honest. Oh, thou we, who art so lovely fair and smell so sweet that the senses ache at thee, wouldst thou had never been born? Alas, what ignorant sin have I committed? Committed? What? Committed? Oh, thou public commoner. I should make very forges of my cheeks that would to sin this burn up modesty did I let by speak thy deeds. Committed? Oh, impudent. Stop it! By heaven, you do me wrong. What? Not a strumpet? No, as I am a Christian. If to preserve this vessel for my lord from any other foul, unlawful touch be not to be a strumpet, I am none. What? Not a whore? No, as I shall be sick. Is that possible? Oh, heaven forgive us. <gasps> oh. I cry you mercy then. I took you for that cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. Mistress, that have the office opposite St. Peter and keep the gates of hell, mistress. You, you, are you? We have done our course. Here's money for your pains. I pray you. Turn the key and keep our counsel. Alas, what does this gentleman conceive? How do you, good madam? How do you, my lady? Faith, half asleep. Good lady, what's the matter with my lord? With who? With my lord, madam. Who is thy lord? 
He that is your sweet lady. I have none. Do not speak to me, Amelia. I, I, I cannot weep, nor answer have I none but what should go by water. Prithee, tonight, lay on my bed my wedding sheets, remember, and call thy husband hither. Here's a change indeed. Tis meet I should be used so, very meet. How have I been behaved? that he might stick the smallest pinion on my least misuse. What is your pleasure, madam? How is't with you? I cannot tell. Those that do teach young babes do it with gentle means and easy tasks. They might have chid me so, for in good faith I am a child to chiding. What's the matter, lady? Alas, Iago, my lord hath so behoard her. For in such despite and heavy terms on her as true hearts cannot bear. Am I that name, Iago? What name, fair lady? Such as she says my lord did say I was. He called her whore. Why did he so? I do not know. I am sure I am none oh, such. Do not weep, do not weep. Alas, the day. Hath she forsook so many noble matches? Her father, her country, her friends to be called or Would it not make one weep? It is my wretched fortune. Shrew him for it. How comes this trick upon him? Nay, heaven doth know. I will be hanged if some eternal villain, some base insinuating rogue, some cogging, cozening slave to get some office, <gasps> have not devised this slander. I will be hanged else. Fie, there is no such man. If any such there be, heaven pardon him. Ah, halter, pardon him, and he'll gnaw his bones. Why should he call her whore? Who keeps her company? What form, what time, what place, what likelihood? The more's abused by some eternal knave, some base notorious knave, some scurvy fellow. Speak within door. Fie upon them. Such squire he was that turned your wit to see me side without, and made you to suspect me with the more. You are a fool. Go to. How could he go? What shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him, for by this light of heaven I know not how I lost him. Here I kneel. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense delighted them in any other form, or that they do not yet, never did, never will. Though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly, comfort for swear me, and kindness may do much, and his unkindness may defeat my life, but never taint my love. Cannot say for, does abhor me now I speak the word. To do the act that might the addition earn, not the world's mass of vanity could make me. I pray you, be content. Tis but his mood. The business of the state does him offense, and he does chide with you. If twere no other. I pray it is but so. Hark, are these instruments summoned to supper? The messengers of Venice stay the meat. Go in, and weep not. All things shall be well. How now, Rodrigo? I do not find thou dealest justly with me. Why, to the contrary. Every day thou daffest me with some device, Iago. And rather, as it seems to me now, keepest me from all conveniency, then suppliest me with the least advantage of hope. I will indeed no longer endure it! Will you hear me, Rodrigo? Say! I've heard too much. For your words and performances are of no kin together. You charge me most unjustly. With naught but truth. I've wasted myself out of my means. The jewels you've had for me to deliver to Desdemona would half have corrupted a votarist. Well. Go to, very well. Very well. 
Go to. I cannot go to, man. It works just not very well. Very well. I said just not very well! I will make myself known to Desdemona. If she gives me my jewels, I'll hand over my suit and repent for my unlawful solicitations. If not, assure yourself I will seek satisfaction of you. You have said now. I and said nothing. But when I protest in ten minutes of doing. Why? Now I see there's metal in thee. And even from this instant to build on thee a better opinion than ever before. Thou hast taken against me a most just exception. But yet I protest, I have dealt most directly in thy affair. It hath not appeared. I grant indeed it hath not appeared. But Rodrigo, if thou hast that in thee indeed, which I have greater reason to believe now than ever, this night show it. If thou the next night following enjoy not Desdemona, take me from this world with treachery and devise engines for my life. Well, what is it? Is it within reason and compass? Sir, there is a special commission come from Venice to depute Cassio in Othello's place. Why, is that true? Why then? Othello and Desdemona return again to Venice. Well, unless his abode be lingered here by some accident, wherein none can be so determinant as the removing of Cassio. Huh. How do you mean, removing of him? Why, <laughs> by making him incapable of Othello's place, knocking out his brain. And that you would have me to do? Aye, if you dare do yourself a profit and a right, I will be near to second your attempt, and he shall fall between us. What? Come, stand not amazed, but go along with me. I shall hear further reason for this, and you shall be satisfied. Seat you, sir. Trouble yourself no further. Pardon me. It will do me good to walk. Madam, good night. I humbly thank your ladyship. Your honor is most welcome. Can we walk, sir? Desdemona. My lord. Get thee to bed on the instant. I will be returned forthwith. Dismiss your attendant there. Look it be done. I will, my lord. How goes it now? He hath commanded me to go to bed and bade me to dismiss you. Dismiss me? It was his bidding. Therefore, good Amelia, give me my knightly wearing and adieu. We must not now displease him. I would you had never seen him. So would not I. My love doth so approve him. I laid those sheets you laid me on the bed. All's one. Good faith, how foolish are our minds. Dost thou in conscience think, tell me, Amelia, that there be women do abuse their husbands in such gross kind? Oh, there be some such, no question. <laughs> Wouldst thou do such a deed for all the world? Why? But not thou? No, by this heavenly light. <laughs> Nor I neither, by this heavenly light. I might uh, do it as well in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wouldst thou do such a deed for all the world? The world's a huge thing. It is a great price for a small vice. In troth, I think thou wouldst not. In troth, I think I wouldst. And undo it when I had done for the whole world. Who would not make her husband a cuckold to make him a monarch? I'd venture purgatory for it. Oh, beshrew me if I would do such a wrong for the whole world. Why, the wrong is but a wrong in the world. And having the world for your labor, it is a wrong in your own world. And you might quickly make it right. <laughs> I do not think there is any such woman. <laughs> yes, a dozen. And as many to the vantage would store the world they played for. <laughs> but I do think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps. Or break out in peevish jealousy, throwing restraint upon us. 
or say they strike us, or scant our former having in despite? Why, we have galls, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. Let husbands know their wives have sense like them. They see and smell and have palates both for sweet and sour as husbands have. What is it they do when they trade us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is it frailty that errs thus? It is so too. And have we not affections? Desires for sport and frailty as men have? Then let them use us well. Else let them know the ills we do. Their ills instruct us so. Good night. Good night. Heaven me such uses send. Not to pick bad from bad, but by bad mend. Here, stand behind this bulk. Straight will he come. Be near a hand, for I may miscarry it. Here at thy hand, be bold and take thy stand. I have no great devotion to the deed, and yet. Yet give me satisfying reasons. I have rubbed this young quart almost to the sense, and he grows angry. Now, whether he kill Cassio or Cassio him, or each do kill the other, every way makes my gain. I know his gate. Tis he. Villain, thou diest! <laughs> than thou knowest, I will make proof of thine. Keeps his word. Oh, no, no, I am. Tis even so. Oh, light. Oh, surgeon, murder, help. Tis he, brave Iago, honest and just. Thou hast such noble sense of thy friend's wrong. Thou teachest me. Minion, your dear lies dead, and your unblessed fate eyes. Strumpet, I come. What? No watch? Oh, no passage! Murder! Murder! Tis some mischance, the cry is very direful. Oh, help. Hark! Oh, wretched villain! Two or three grown as heavy night. Hark! Here's one comes in his shirt with light and weapons. Who's there? Whose noise is this that cries on murder? We do not know! Did not you hear a cry? Oh, here I'll go. Oh, I'm spoiled! Undone by villains. Oh, give me some help. Lieutenant, what villains have done this? I think that one of them is here about. Cannot make a way. Treacherous villains. What are you there? Come in and give some help. Oh, help me here. That's one of them. Oh, murderous slave. Oh, villain. A damn it, Oh, inhuman dog. Kill men in the dark. Where be these bloody thieves? I cry you mercy, here's Cassio hurt by villains! Cassio! How is, brother? Oh, my leg. I can too. Light! I'll bind it. What is the matter? Who is it that cried? Who is that cried? Oh, Cassio! Oh, Cassio, my sweet Cassio! Oh, Cassio. notable strumpet! <laughs> Cassio, may you suspect who they should be that have thus mangled you? Oh, no. I'm sorry to find you thus. I have been to seek you. Alas, he faints. Oh, Cassio, my sweet Cassio. Patience, good Cassio. Come, come. Know we this face or no? Alas, my friend and dear countryman, Rodrigo. 
No. Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, heaven, Rodrigo. What of Venice? Even he. Did you know him? Know him? I. Oh, Madame Graciana. I cry you gentle pardon. These bloody accidents must excuse my manners that so neglected you. I'm glad to see you. How is Cassio? Rodrigo. He, he, tis he. Bear him carefully from hence. I'll fetch the general surgeon. Cassio, he that lies here slain was my dear friend. What malice was between you? Oh, none of the world. Nor do I know the man. What? Look you pale, or bear him out of the air. Alas, what's the matter? What's the matter, husband? Cassio hath here been set on in the dark by Rodrigo and fellows that escaped. He's almost slain and Rodrigo dead. Alas, good Cassio. Kind friends, let's go see poor Cassio dressed. Familia, run you to the citadel and tell my lord and lady what hath happed. Will you go on, I pray? This is the night that either makes me or fordoes me quite. <laughs> it is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. Yet, I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow. And smooth as monumental alabaster, yet she must die else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore should I repent me. If I put out thy light, Oh, cunning pattern of excelling nature. I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. When I have plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It must needs wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Oh, balmy breath, that dust almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more. One more. Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. She wakes. Who's there? Othello. Aye, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, mm, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled, is yet to heaven and grace solicit for it straight. Alas, what do you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief! I will walk by. I will not kill thy unprepared spirit. No heaven for Fen. I will not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? Aye, I do. And heaven have mercy on me. Amen with all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. And yet I fear you, for you are fatal when your eyes roll so. Why I should fear I know not, since guiltiness I know not, but yet I feel I fear. Think on thy sins! They are loves I bear to you. Aye, and for that thou diest. But that does so natural the kills for loving. Alas, why gnaw you so your nether lip? 
Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are portents, but yet I hope, I hope they do not point on me. Peace and be still. I will. What's the matter? That handkerchief, which I so loved and gave to thee, thou gavest to Cassio! No, no, by my life and soul, send for the man hither. Oh, perjured woman, thou dost stone my heart, and makest me call what I intend to do a murder which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief! He found it then, I never gave it him. Send for him hither, let him confess a truth. Oh, he hath confessed. What, my lord? That he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. He will not say so. No. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath taken order for it. Oh, my fair interprets, what? Is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all! Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not! Down, strumpet! <laughs> kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight! Nay, if you strive! But half an hour! Being done, there is no cause! But while I say one prayer! It is too late! Quite dead. I then am cruel and yet merciful. I will not have thee linger in thy pains. So, so. What ho, oh, my lord! My lord! Who's there? I would speak with you for good, my lord. Yes. Tis Amelia. As if she comes to speak of Cassio's death. Still has the grave. I think she stirs again. No. I do beseech you that I might speak with you, O oh good my lord. I'd, I'd forgotten thee, Amelia. Oh, come in. What's the matter with thee now? Good my lord, yonder's foul murder's done. What now? What now, my lord? Tis the very air of the moon. She comes more near the earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Cassio, my lord, hath killed a young Venetian called Rodrigo. Cassio killed? Rodrigo killed? Uh, Cassio's not killed. Cassio not killed. The murder's out of tune, and sweet revenge grows harsh. <sighs> falsely, falsely murdered. Alas, what noise is that? That? What? Out, and alas, that was my lady's voice. Help! Oh, help! Sweet lady, speak again. Desdemona! Oh, sweet mistress, speak! A guiltless death I die. Who hath done this deed? Nobody. I myself. Farewell. Commend me to my kind lord. Why, how should she be murdered? Alas, who knows? Twas not I. You heard her say herself, it was not I. She said so, I must needs report the truth. She's like a liar gone to a burning hell. Twas I that killed her. Oh, the more angel she is, thou the blacker devil. 
She turned to folly and she was a whore. Thou dost belie her and thou art a devil. She was false as water. You're a rash as fire to say that she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. Cassio did talk her. Ask thy husband else. I did proceed on just grounds in this extremity. Thy husband knew it all. My husband. Thy husband. But she was false to wedlock. Nay. Had she been true, if heaven would make me such another world of one entire imperfect chrysolite, I'd not have sold her for it. My husband. T'was he that told me first. An honest man he is that hates the slime that sticks on filthy deeds. My husband. <laughs> what needs this iterance, woman? I say thy husband. If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day he lies to the heart. Oh, villainy. Mistress, villainy have made mocks with love. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. Huh. Do thy worst. This deed of thine is no more worthy heaven than thou wast worthy her. Peace. You were best. Well, you have not half that power to do me harm as I have to be hurt. I care not for thy sword. Oh, don't. Oh, gall, ignorant as dirt, you have done a deed. I'll make thee known, though I lost twenty lives. Help. Help! Oh, the Moor has killed my mistress! Murder! Murder! What is the matter? What the hell now, General? Oh, are you come, Iago? You have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. What is the matter? Disprove this villain, if thou beest a man. He says thou toldst him his wife was false. I know thou didst not. Thou art not such a villain. Speak, for my heart is full. I told him what I thought, and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. But did you ever tell him she was false? I did. You told a lie, an odious, damned lie upon my soul, a wicked lie. She false with Cassio? Did you say with Cassio? With Cassio, mistress! Go to, charm your tongue! I will not charm my tongue. I am bound to speak. My mistress here lies murdered in her bed, and your reports have set the murder on. Nay, stare not, masters. Tis true, indeed. Tis a strange truth. Oh, monstrous act. Villainy. Villainy, I thought so then. I'll kill myself for grief. Villainy. Villainy! What, are you mad? I charge you, get you home. I pray you, generals, give me leave to speak. Tis proper I obey him, but not now. Perchance, Iago, I never will go home. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, lay thee down and roar, for thou hast killed the sweetest innocent that ever did lift up eye. <laughs> she was foul. I know this act shows horrible and grim. I am glad thy father's dead. Did he live now? This sight would make him do a desperate turn. Yea, curse his better angel from his side. And fall to reprobation. <laughs> Tis pitiful. But yet Iago knows that she with Cassio hath the act of shame a thousand times committed. Cassio confessed it. And she did gratify his amorous works with that which I first gave her. I saw it in his hand. A handkerchief. An antique token that my father gave my mother. Oh, heaven. Oh, heavenly powers. Mom, hold your peace. No. I will speak as liberal as the North. Let heaven and men and devils all, all cry shame against me, yet I'll speak. Wise and get you home! I will not! Fie! Your sword upon a woman? Oh, thou dull moor! That handkerchief thou speak'st of, I found by fortune, and to give my husband, for oft 
often with a solemn earnestness he did beg of me to seal it. Villainous whore. She give it Cassio? No, alas, I found it, and I did give it my husband. Till thou liest! In faith I do not, good gentles. Oh, murderous coxcomb, what would such a fool do with so good a woman? Are there no stones in heaven? But what stir for the thunder? Precious villain! The woman falls. Sure, he hath killed his wife. Oh, I, I, oh, let me by my mistress. He's gone, but his wife's killed. Tis a notorious villain. Take you this weapon which I have here recovered from the moor. Come guard the door without. Let him not pass, but kill him rather. I'll after that same villain, for tis a damned slave. I'm not valiant neither. Why should honor outlive honesty? Let it go all. Oh, oh more. She was chaste. She loved thee more. So come my soul to bliss as I speak true. So speaking as I think, I die. I No, oh, I have another weapon in this chamber. Here it is. I must come forth. If thou attempt it, it will cost thee dear. Thou hast no weapon, and perforce must suffer. Look in upon me and speak with me, then, for as naked as I am, I will assault thee. What is the matter? Be not afraid, though you see me weapon. Here's my journey's end. Now. How dost thou look now? O oh, ill-starred wench, pale as thy smock, cold. Cold. My girl, even like thy chastity. Oh, just a moment, dead. Where is this rash and most unfortunate man? That's he that was Othello. Here I am. Where is the viper? Bring the villain forth. Oh, I look down upon thy feet, but that's a fable. If thou beest the devil, I cannot kill thee. I bleed, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I'd have thee live, for in my sense it is happiness to die. O thou Othello, thou wert once so good, fallen in practice of a damned slave, what shall be said of thee? Why, anything. An honorable murder, if you will. For not I did in hate, but all in honor. Did you and he consent in Cassio's death? Aye. <laughs> but, sir, I never gave you cause. I do believe it, and I ask your forgiveness. I pray you, demand this demi-devil why he hath thus ensnared my soul and body. <laughs> demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. Torments will open your lips. Well, thou dost best. Cassio, how came you of that handkerchief that was my wife's? I found it in my chamber. But there he dropped it for some special purpose which wrought in his desires. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you must forsake this room and go with us. Your pirate command is taken off. And Cassio rules in Cyprus. Come bring him away. 
soft you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, <laughs> but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. Of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, drop tears as fast as the Arabian trees, their medicinal gum. Set you down this and say, besides, that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turban Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog, and smote him thus. Oh, bloody period. Oh, this did I fear. Thought he had no weapon, for he was great of heart. Oh, Spartan dog. Look! Upon the tragic loading of this bed, this is thy work! The object's poison sight! To you, Lord Governor, remains the censure of this hellish villain. The time, the place, the torture. Oh, enforce it. Myself, straight aboard to the state. It's heavy act with heavy heart relate.